Coming up on Ag Week TV, elevator search for bean storage options amidst the trade war. Beef it's what's for dinner at the Sanford International Golf Tournament. I'll have the story coming up. And we'll look at the youth infusion in a rural North Dakota town. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Michelle Rook. It was a busy week on the trade front. The U.S. signed the renegotiated South Korean Free Trade Agreement, or CORUS. It lowers the import tariffs to zero for many U.S. products going into South Korea, including beef and pork. On Wednesday, the U.S. and Japan announced they'll open negotiations on a bilateral trade agreement. Meanwhile, Canada has left the NAFTA talks and will not sign onto the current U.S.-Mexican trade agreement. And the U.S. implemented another $200 billion of tariffs on Chinese imports, which triggered $60 billion of retaliatory tariffs from China. With the ongoing trade war, more farmers are looking for places to store soybeans and edible beans as they wait for better prices through a trade deal. However, as Michael Pates reports, that's also severely challenging grain elevators in the region. North Dakota is feeling the effect of the trade war more than other states. That's influenced one of the state's largest grain companies, Columbia Grain International, to lease two large buildings to store soybeans and edible beans. What this storage base does, it's going to allow us to get a little bit more aggressive with our basis and then also allow us to offer a DP delayed price program for our producers. CGI is also a large player in edible beans, but uncertainty over NAFTA has upended shipments to Mexico and EU tariffs have compounded the problem. As it slowed us down from the processing side and shipping side to we've we've had to go to additional storage to to handle the product that we're, we're going to carry over more storage brings more costs and risks but stegman says they need to try something about 75 percent of the state's soybean crop goes to china and he doesn't see them coming back into the market for several weeks if nothing moves before that time everything is just going to build up and we've got a big crop to move in a very short period of time so we foresee everything being compounded out. That means if the farmer plans on storing his beans, he might be very well look at storing them until June, July of next year. Stegman says they have a size and diversification advantage, but smaller companies and standalone elevators will be challenged. In Arvilla, North Dakota, this is Michael Pates for Ag Week. USD is projecting record crops in Nebraska this year with a 62 bushel per acre yield on soybeans and 198 bushel per acre yield on corn. Farmers in the state admit, for the most part, it has been a nearly ideal growing season, and it will be reflected as the combines roll through the fields. Nebraska farmers are preparing for a bumper crop. Even with a late start, the corn ended up ahead on GDUs, and timely rains made irrigation unneeded. Corn crops, the biggest crop I, I think is going to be the biggest crop I've had. So probably looking in uh, 220 to 270. I know the appraisal for crop insurance, most of the irrigated corn is in that 230 to 250 range. Um, dry land pivot corners were in the 200 to 210 bushel range. The only concern with corn is standability, which may force some farmers to harvest corn before beans. Dealing with some stalk rot now, just kind of, that's kind of been happening over the summer. And with timely August rains and big pod counts, the state's farmers are also gearing up for a huge bean harvest. Soybeans I never really know, but I'm hoping shooting for that 70 to 80 bushel. Um, so they have, everybody's soybeans look good too in the area. There'll be quite a bit of 70 bushel beans out there, so, so which will be pretty good compared to the last few years. The only catch has been disease issues in some soybeans, such as white mold. I'm going to have way subpar yields, so, but I'm not the norm. I just, I got a couple diseases in me and it got me in early and no rebound from it. Yet he still believes the state will have a record soybean crop, especially with record acreage planted this spring. In crop news this week, the Department of Justice handed down a decision on an important pesticide. DOJ requested a rehearing on the case which directed EPA to ban the insecticide chlorpyrifos, or LORS ban. This is a common and effective insecticide for growers for control of pests like soybean aphids. A U.S. District Court judge has upheld North Dakota's corporate farming law. The law was challenged by the North Dakota Farm Bureau, which called the law unconstitutional. However, the judge ruled the law that prevents corporations from owning ag operations should remain. No word yet on whether the decision will be appealed. 
Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll travel to a North Dakota town where a fresh crop of young people are coming home and putting down roots. For home delivery of Ag Week, log on to agweek.com or call 800-811-2580. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. It helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. If you get right down to it, what's a farmer's job? Well, farmer's job is to feed people. Farmers collectively, our job is to feed the world. At Peterson Farm Seed, we get to have it. a little bit bigger picture right in our region. We get to help those farmers that we work with increase their productivity, increase the yields that they get on their farms. And as a result, more people can eat. Explore the convergence of agriculture and technology at Cultivate 2018 on November 15th. Cultivate is an emerging technology in agriculture conference hosted by Emerging Prairie of Fargo. Connect with industry leaders and farmers and learn about how the latest tech innovations are being utilized in agriculture. For more information, visit EmergingPrairie.com. When harvest comes around, time is precious and you don't have a moment to waste. North Star Ag offers the Loftness Grain Logics Grain Bag Loader to deliver versatile grain storage performance load after load. Loftness's user friendly grain baggers are easy to load and unload, perfect to get your harvest in the bag. North Star Ag also sells a variety of Valmar spreaders, the leader in air boom delivery, and is a full service Meridian Hopper Bin dealer. Visit NorthStarAg.com to see our complete new and used equipment inventory or give us a call. When grain flow becomes blocked in your bin, it can cause costly delays, safety concerns, and expensive equipment repairs. Superior Grain Equipment's premium unloading system, featuring their patented Blockbuster Auger, keeps you and your equipment running safely and efficiently by breaking up blockages near the center sump gate to allow for continuous grain flow. Operated from outside the bin, the Blockbuster could be engaged independently from the sweep, eliminating the need to enter the bin to clear blockages. Superior products for superior bins, only available from Superior Grain Equipment. Ag Week TV, presented by Kaler Farms. Attracting young families is vital to every community. They shop, pay taxes, send their kids to local schools, and volunteer. And as the average age of farmers rises, it's more important than ever to bring them back to the farm. Jonathan Knutson visited one rural town that saw many come back during the boom years and are sticking it out during current lean times. To survive and thrive, rural communities need infusions of young blood, talented and committed young adults. That's happening here in Washburn, North Dakota. There's quite a number of guys in this area that are on the younger generation that are heavily involved, heavily invested in this and doing a real good job. It's a great, vibrant community with a lot of diversity and um, as far as the energy sector, the egg sector. Joseph Sheldon moved back to his family farm in 2011. He and his family are part of an infusion of young farm families in the past few years. It's a great place to, to grow up and live and it's a good sense of community, that's for sure. Every day I'd want to go to the farm with my dad. Grant Tweeten, 23, is among the youngest to have returned. He's glad to be back farming with his dad. The only thing I've ever really wanted to do with my life and just happened, I was able to come back. Grant's dad, Rick, says he's happy to have his son and others like him back in the Washburn area. But Rick understands the challenges that rural areas face in attracting young families. It's tough to in this modern society to convince them that they should come out here no matter how much they want to farm. Tana Larson was a Washburn farm kid too. Now she's back as economic development director with the hope of recruiting others. We like to pride ourselves that we're a progressive community, that we are looking towards the future and trying to position ourselves for the future. Thanks to the infusion of young farm families, that future looks brighter here in Washburn. For Egg Week, this is Jonathan Knutson. 
Jonathan will have more on this story in the next Ag Week magazine. Conservationists and government officials toured a western North Dakota ranch recently as part of the state's grassland policy tour and workshop. As Jenny Schleck reports, it's an effort to share information about policies that have helped ranchers use conservation practices. Representatives of federal government, state government, and non-governmental organizations came together recently to discuss two of North Dakota's most precious resources, its grasslands and its soil. For me, it's all about information and education and uh, getting the word out about the soil health movement. Daryl Oswald hosted the group on his ranch near Wing, North Dakota. I think we need to be better conservation planners. He's been planting cover crops for 12 years. We'll graze this sometime in December or November. Besides healthier soil, he's seen an increase in wildlife and profitability. So we can be further profitable and sustainable and something that it encourages and young people want to be a part of. Another goal is to protect and restore wetlands and grasslands for migratory birds in the prairie pothole region. And that's really our key goal here is to, to make sure that these migratory birds um, are at sustained levels, at levels that we all want. And certainly working with landowners and, and ranchers are a big part of what we do. Of a 34 pasture system. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum says taking care of the land will also help keep the state sustainable. It's part of what makes North Dakota a great place to live and we got to retain the people who grew up here and we got to attract families to come here if we're going to reach our full potential and one way we do that is taking great care of the land. Near Wing, North Dakota, this is Jenny Schlecht for Ag Week. The Prairie Pothole Joint Venture and the North Dakota Grazing Lands Coalition hosted the tour. Cow-calf producers could increase their returns by keeping yearlings over the winter. The director of the NDSU Livestock Research Center at Dickinson thinks it's your best bet for getting full value for your forage resources. Chris Wingwall says research shows over the past decade, most producers who have sold calves typically make $100 to $150 on the cow. But Ringwall thinks that with later calving, the results might improve. Instead of moving that calf into a grain-based program, which works, is to put that calf in a forage-based program in which we don't push gain on that calf. Our calves probably gain pound, pound and a half over the winter months. And then once they get turned back out on our cool season grasses, that's when you really get some gain off those calves. And then we can put them into, into a grass program. Ringwall says in addition, this practice can make your operation less labor intensive. Ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll see how South Dakota cattle producers beefed up a major golf event. Plus your agri-weather outlook for the coming week. Giving farmers access to data from the elevator right in their pocket. Helping them make better decisions. No more keeping track of paper scale tickets. Innovation. It's always been a part of the farming culture. Integrating directly with elevators to give growers real-time information, all through a mobile app. Your elevator, powered by Bushel. Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries West Steel's quality stainless steel products for on-farm and commercial grain storage solutions. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Get a hold of Chad Kylo to find the perfect solution for your farm. Field Drainage Inc. has perfected the art of agricultural drainage by helping hundreds of farmers since 1978. We are a second generation family owned business for over 35 years. The Field Drainage Inc. team will work closely with you to conduct a thorough analysis of your needs and expectations. Provide an estimate that fits your budget, perform all work in a timely and professional manner, and provide continued service after installation. Field Drainage Inc., your trusted drain tile installation company for over 35 years. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200. 
or visit us online at martinsonag.com. Aspire is a premium delivery of boron. It's a potash source that has two forms of boron in it. One form of boron is available early in the crop needs, and then we have another form of boron that's more of a slow release. So throughout the whole growth stage or a cycle of a crop, you need to teaspoon feed that crop, especially with these micronutrients. If you need to learn more about boron, what does boron do within the plant? So we have AspireBoron.com. There's also CropNutrition.com. Normally, a cowboy hat on the golf course might get a double take, but not in South Dakota. Cattle producers and the South Dakota Beef Industry Council promoted the nutritional value of beef to athletes and seniors at the Sanford International Golf Tournament in Sioux Falls last weekend. Cattle producers from across South Dakota used the senior PGA event to promote the protein power of beef by handing out 500 free ribeye steak sandwiches to spectators. We brought beef to the table as that premier protein and the official protein of the PGA golf tournament. So we're pretty excited. It's actually come around where, I mean, they're starting to show that it's a valuable source of protein. And it's not just the protein, it's all the other vitamins and iron. The council also hosted a hospitality tent called The Ranch, where cattle producers showed consumers what they do to raise beef through virtual ranch tours. And it goes in the feedlot side of it. It's very interesting to me to show people how we take care of them, how we feed them to get them the product that we want to provide to them, a premier product. The golf course was also a great venue to talk about the role beef and protein plays in the diet of athletes and seniors. Can help can maintain those uh, healthy muscles, which is really important for people as they get older. Uh, losing muscle mass is an important aspect. And you'll find the council showcasing beef at the tournament in 2019 as Sioux Falls is hosting the event for the next six years. The council got additional exposure as several TV networks and the Golf Channel broadcast the event. This week's Crop Stop takes us to Beach on the western edge of North Dakota. Beach Co-op Grain Company GM Levi Hall says small grain yields were slightly above average, but with a very dry summer corn yields, which average 100 to 120 bushels per acre, are expected to be cut in half. Corn is going to be is going to really struggle this year without any rains in July, and we didn't see any August rains until about the 25th. I think 60 bushel will probably be a good guess. You know, we're going to see a lot of half-filled cobs, smaller cobs than normal, thinner cobs. Hall expects average to above average yields on sunflowers despite the dryness. And here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. A big block of cool weather is dropping down, has dropped down into the northern plains, courtesy of a west coast ridge of high pressure. We actually talked about this ridge last week and talked about how it would be interesting to see how this west coast ridge would interact with our ongoing weather pattern all through the fall and into the winter. Well, for the time being, we've got some very cool fall temperatures and precipitation that may at times try to mix with a little snow in some areas and there are more widespread frosts and freezes in the forecast. Here's the high pressure ridge. It's a doozy, a big area of warm high pressure over the Pacific Ocean, sending the jet stream way up north into Alaska. And that, of course, sends it southward into the United States. Now, for the time being, it's just cool in the north. The really warm air has been squelched south a little bit. And the cold, the sub-freezing stuff, is staying up around the Hudson Bay region. But as we go through this week, there's going to be another little dip, it looks like. So our weather will be getting cooler into the Dakotas, and some of that will drop down at as far south as Iowa. By cool, I mean unseasonably cool, well below average. We're even going to squeeze the heat just a little bit, although I suspect that will bounce back. The second full week of October, we are cool. Now, we're not seeing sub-freezing highs, just way cooler than average. As far as precipitation goes... Few showers, a little wet snow in some areas, most of that in southern Canada, but it will be fairly wet around through the week. Down and through the Corn Belt is where there will likely be the more substantial rainfalls, but a lot of just genuinely damp weather. And the second week on the board, not showing as much precipitation as that will tend to shift east, mostly just cool, damp weather into the northern plains. And by cool and damp here, what we're talking about is just damp, not so much heavy precipitation. But it looks cool for the next couple weeks. 
With the all-new GreenFit system from Rykard, plug and play is finally a reality when using John Deere AutoTrack guidance with existing new products like the Challenger 1000 series or all-new C-Series Road Gators from Butler Machinery. GreenFit is an authorized navigation interface that utilizes the existing John Deere AutoTrack guidance system to steer most Challenger tractors and sprayers. GreenFit eliminates the worry of learning and converting to a new steering system when buying an industry-leading Challenger from Butler Machinery. Learn more about GreenFit at butlermachinery.com. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. Stein Seed Company is home to one of the most prolific, highest yielding corn and soybean breeding programs in the world. When it comes to research, yield is what matters most. With the largest private soybean breeding program in the U.S. and the industry's most aggressive corn research, Stein is in a class of its own when it comes to developing new, higher-performing seed. Choose genetics. Choose results. Give Shane Kylo a call at 701-866-9864 to learn what Stein Seed can do for your operation. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a Cornstock Guide. It's made out of UHMW, ultra high molecular weight poly, which is extremely durable. Typically what you'll see on corn heads is the idler chain in the sprocket sticks out. We attach to the side of a snout. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. Add more bushels to your hopper and money to your pocket by harnessing the power of air with Crary Wind Systems. Whether your beans are chest high or barely off the ground, Crary offers two solutions that add a constant stream of high velocity air to quickly feed crop back to the auger, eliminating bunching, reducing shatter loss, and increasing your ground speed. Don't let crop conditions dictate your yield. Check out the Crary Air Reel or Crary Wind System today. The Ag Week TV Ag Tech Minute is brought to you by Bushel. In this week's Ag Tech Minute, we see how climate field view is helping farmers make all their farming decisions easier. The climate field view is a technology platform. It integrates all your farm data into one app, but it brings all your equipment's data that you're collecting on your farm, whether it be John Deere or Case, it doesn't matter what color your equipment is, kind of colorblindly brings it into one data point and you can start looking at all those data and start looking at trends across your farm, whether it be with hybrids or different practices you're doing and start utilizing those trends and looking at that data to, to make decisions in your farm to start boosting your profits. So we have growers that are using it all times of the year. It starts with planting, when they're planting what hybrids to put where, and then it goes on to the summertime when they're spraying, tracking their weather event, and then it comes back in the, in the harvest, tracking yield. So here at Peterson Farm Seed, we're using Climate Field View to help our customers to start growing more bushels. It allows our agronomists and our agronomy team, our sales teams, and our dealers to work hand in hand with their growers throughout the whole season, whether it be uh, at the start of the seed sale all the way till harvest. They're always looking at fields. They're able to interpret their data and make better decisions on their farm. The Ashby, Minnesota Farmers Co-op Elevator is picking up the pieces in the wake of alleged theft by its longtime manager. The elevator closed in mid-September after discovering at least $2 million was missing. Manager Jerry Hennessy disappeared after the theft was exposed and he hasn't been seen since. The Minnesota Ag Department says the company was certified only as a grain buyer and was not storing on behalf of farmers who still own the grain. That's why it didn't need to undergo the type of inventory audit that was part of this theft and fraud. Nick Milanowski with the department's grain unit division says farmers who have delayed pricing contracts should file claims against a $125,000 bond. Any indication that they are owed money by the elevator and have gone unpaid, um, we'll use that in our investigation to to see if they have a valid claim. But bankruptcy lawyer Eric Algren says it's too early to say how much money can be recovered. The board is talking with other cooperatives to get it running again. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll meet a man taking up beekeeping during a challenging time for the industry. 
or home delivery of Ag Week, log on to agweek.com or call 800-811-2580. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckin's specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. For over 40 years, Northside Implement has been your Gell and Vermeer dealer in Webster, South Dakota and Lidgerwood, North Dakota. With new equipment including feeding, grain handling, haying, and skid steer, as well as a nice selection of used equipment including sprayers, spreaders, seating, as well as tractors and loaders. Northside Implement stands behind the equipment they sell with quality service guaranteed. See us for all your repairs and parts, from tillage to skid steer loaders to combines and everything in between. Contact Dave, Lydell, Tom, or Chris today at Northside Implement or visit our website for our complete equipment listing. We have representatives everywhere. Through North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, and Minnesota, we can find a buyer for what you were selling. We know how to market your farmland or equipment. Give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes Way. North Dakota is the nation's top honey producing state, but there have been challenges for beekeepers in recent years. The amount of honey a hive produces has dropped from about 200 pounds in the 1970s to 40 pounds today. One reason is the changes in habitat. Fields that were once in the Conservation Reserve Program have transitioned to row crops, reducing the native forage bees need to produce honey. Beekeepers also struggle with mite infestations and have faced weather problems the last few years, first too dry for the bees, then too wet. Despite the challenges, Chad Price got into beekeeping about two years ago. He has about 3,000 hives and is learning the business by trial and error. Trying to keep hives alive is the, the biggest thing, you know. It's a lot to learn and what works and what doesn't work. Try this, it doesn't work. Try something else. In January, Price will be taking his bees to California to pollinate the almond crop. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or download the Ag Week app. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. We'll see you next week.